Hello, my name is Corey Knickerbocker. I am a professional services engineer with SnapLogic, and today I will present two solutions to pivot data from rows to columns in a standard mode SnapLogic pipeline. Here's a visualization of the example requirement. We have an input data set that has records that represent the Java version installed on the employee workstations at a fictional company. To make it easy to understand the numbers, we want to see how many of those installations are on each operating system by JVM version. For these examples, we are ignoring the suffix value, but that could always be added into the logic if needed. I'll walk through two solutions to pivot these rows into columns. The first option will use an aggr aggregate snap and conditionally sum the data based on the value in the OS column. This solution is fairly easy to implement and is very similar to the logic used in the background by the pivot function found in many databases such as Oracle and SQL Server. One shortcoming of this solution is that it isn't very generic. This is the same as with the database with pivot function. You'll need to know all of the column values you want to output and will need to update your pipeline if any new OS values are added to the input data. The second option solves this issue by using JavaScript array and object methods to perform the data pivot after the record counts are calculated with an aggregate snap. So as new OS values appear in the input data, the pipeline will simply add new columns to the output automatically. Let's take a look at the pipelines for each of these solutions. Here's the first pipeline that reads the input data. I've saved this as a file on our SLDB. We can see the same input data as in our original example. We'll first sort by the JVM version and OS, and then use an aggregate function with the conditional sum logic. So you can see I'm simply summing by each of the values. So where the OS is equal to Linux, I will sum one for every time that holds true for each record, and I'll put that to a Linux field. And then same thing for each of the three Windows versions uh, that we saw in the input data. Looking at the output from the aggregate, we see that we have the JVM version and each of the OS values with the appropriate counts. And then we're simply writing that data back out to the SLDB. Now again, this is not very generic. I'll have to update this as a new OS is introduced in the input data. So how do we do this more generically? Well, we're going to read the same input file. We'll do the same sort on the JVM and OS. And then we'll aggregate, but this time we're going to add an aggregate for the OS as well as the JVM version. And I'm simply getting the count by each of those groups. Now, if we look at the output from this, we can see that we have the JVM version and then each OS is listed uh, as an additional record. So we still need to pivot this. We'll do that generically by taking a copy of the data. We'll split that data stream, the first, the top stream, We'll further group the data by the JVM version. So we'll now have an array out of this group by fields. Now we have only three records. We have each of the JVM versions and an array with each of these OSs and their final counts. So we're close, but we're not quite there. We need to flatten this out so that we can output this in the final structure. But the first thing that we need to do is figure out how many different OS versions we have. So we'll use another aggregate, and this time we'll use the unique concat function on the OS, which when we come out of the unique OS aggregate here, we'll see that we have a pipe delimited list of the different OSs that are present in the data. So it's a unique list, which means we can simply merge that data uh, so we'll use an inner join. This is basically a Cartesian product so that I'll have that unique OS listing for each of my records coming out of the group by. So now I have a group by with the, each of the JVM versions. I have a group that represents my counts. And I have also added in this unique list of OS strings to the output data. Now here is where we start getting into more of the JavaScript concept. So actually pivoting this from an array, this group array, into an object. So we're using that unique OS string, which remember is a pipe-limited list. So we'll use the JavaScript split function on that string. 
which will give me an array of uh, each, ele each element in the array will be a different OS. And we'll take that array and we're going to convert that to an object. So the two object function has two callback functions uh, that are used in, as parameters in this method. The first parameter, I will give it each of these array elements, uh, I'll, I'll give it the name that I want as the object uh, key value pair. So this is the key. The second callback function gives me the value. So in this case, the value, I want to find the object. So it's this group object. I'm going to find this group based on the OS name that I just got from my unique OS. So for each of the elements in the array for the OS, I'm going to get this entire group object in the result. So let's, let's take a look. That'll make more sense looking at the output of this value. So here again, I have my three records with the JVM version. And now I have this pivoted value. And we can see that for Linux, I have the, ob the original object um, with the JVM version, the OS, and the count that came out of my aggregate. Looking at the third record, we can see that all four of these values for each of these OS versions has this entire record, this entire object. So now we want to clean this up. So we have this data. We've got it by the JVM version. We've got the count, but it's kind of buried in this nested object. So let's take a next step, and we'll simplify those counts a little bit. The way that we'll do that is using the object map values function, which has a callback function. And in this case, I'm simply going to say, if the object is null, I'm just going to return a null. If it actually has, if I can find that object, in other words, if Linux is here, it will have a count element to it. So I'll simply return that count. So now coming out of this mapper, I'll be able to see my JVM version and all of the different counts. Well, now I still need to flatten this one more layer. I want these values to come up into the same root level as the JVM version so I can output it to a CSV or an Excel file. So the final step is to simply flatten that object. And that will do by using the object extend function. So the first thing I'll do is create a new object with the JVM version. It looks much like what it did coming from the input. And then I'm going to extend that very tiny little object uh, by all the elements in the counts object. So now coming out of this final object, I have a nice flat structure where I have my JVM version, each of the operating systems that it found in the input data, and their corresponding counts. And then of course I'm simply outputting to my file writer. I hope this short tutorial was helpful for you. Thank you for watching.